Welcome everyone to Connected Learning TV. This is a special conversation and today brought to you in part by Voto Latino. My name is Yandari Zavala. I'm Deputy Communications Director for Voto Latino and I will be moderating the discussion today. Uh, for those who are watching, please take a moment to share with your networks. The social media hashtag we'll be using today is hashtag VLHangout. And if you're watching live, feel free to follow along the conversation or to add your own two cents on Twitter or Facebook. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, for those in the audience who are not familiar with Voto Latino, we just celebrated our 10-year anniversary in 2014. We were co-founded 10 years ago by Rosario Dawson, and we target primarily Latino millennials, so those who are 18 to 34, and we do that in English. Now, this might seem a little bit uh, revolutionary. Um, well, maybe not so much today, but 10 years ago for sure, uh, people got... A lot of a lot of weird looks when they they told that they were going to target Latinos in English and online. But as we as we know today, Latinos over-index on social media, um, on internet usage, especially on mobile usage. And we know that ten years ago, uh, when this organization was co-founded, they were they were definitely thinking um, thinking ahead. And Voto Latino started out as a voter registration and civic engagement organization, but that's not everything we do. In the last 10 years, we've had, we've had a lot of highlights. We've helped in the 2010 census to get Latinos um, registered. We have registered more than 300,000 people in the, in the 10 years that we've been around. We were one of the founding partners of National Voter Registration Day. Um, and just this last year, we did something a little extra special. We launched the VL Innovators Challenge. The VL Innovators Challenge is a $500,000 tech competition, and the purpose for this um, this competition is to create a, a pipeline of Latino tech talent to Silicon Valley. Right now, Latinos make up 17% of the population, but we only make up 7% of U.S. tech workers. I know, it's shocking, 7%. And so this challenge in support with the, from the MacArthur Foundation and in partnership with Haystack and Google uh, was started to find the creative ideas in the Latino community, to find the young people who were applying technology in innovative ways to solve problems in their, in their surroundings. And so joining us today are two of our seven winners, which we announced last week. Um, I'll give them a moment to introduce themselves. Um, let's start with Alexis. And um, then we'll go to Beto and Sarai. Yes. Hello. I'm, I'm Alexis Chayet. I am at the University of Virginia on the other side, on the East Coast. Um, I'm a third year, majoring in human biology and interested in going into medicine. Awesome. Thank you. Beto? My, na my name is Alberto Altamirano. My friends call me Beto. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a graduate from the University of Texas at Austin. And I'm interested in infrastructure and connecting citizens and local government. Yeah, sorry about that, Alberto. And apparently I consider myself a friend, Beto. <laughs> Sarai, can you say a couple words about yourself? Yes, hello everybody. My name is Sarai. I am a student here at Kenyatta College in Redwood City, California. It's my second year and I'm preparing to transfer out with a political science major. That's awesome. Thank you so much, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today. We hosted these guys along with um, the other four winners of the challenge last week here in Washington, D.C. They're based all across the country, uh, and Virginia, California, Texas. Um, well, well, we're here in D.C. at Voto Latino. We hosted them last week and were able to meet them in person and, and give them their awards. And at the end of the month, we get to take all the winners to uh, the Bay Area to Google headquarters for a two-day boot camp. We're so excited and we're so excited to hear a little bit more about your projects today. So actually, let's start there. Um, let's go in the reverse order. So we'll start out with Sarai, then um, Beto and Alexis. Can you tell us a little bit about your individual projects? Uh, remember that watching right now are a lot of folks who have never heard of the VL Innovators Challenge. And if they have, they probably don't know what your project's about. So let's, let's hear what your projects are about, Sarai. Sure. So my project that I submitted into the Voto Latino Innovators Challenge was called Dreamers Roadmap. And it's basically an app that's going to help undocumented students find scholarship opportunities due to the fact that we don't qualify for financial aid or federal scholarships. Dreamers Roadmap is going to be the one go-to tool for all undocumented students in the nation to be able to find all the scholarships for which they're eligible for and not one scholarship on this app will be denied to them because of their status. That's incredible. Thank you, Sarai. Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. Better? Better, yeah? All right, we'll come back. <laughs> Alexis, can you tell us a little bit about your project? Of course. Um, so my project is targeting Latino migrant farm workers. So I am from Charlottesville, Virginia, and if you travel just 20 minutes uh, outside the city, you will find a very rural uh, farm farm area. And up in the mountains, in the orchards, there is a, a large population of migrant men who are very much isolated. Um, from a lot of healthcare centers. Many of them have never seen uh, a doctor. Um, a lot of them have the barrier of language, as do a, a large population of Latinos. And so our project is aimed at installing tablet devices at several of the camps out in Nelson and Albemarle County. And the goal of these tablets is kind of twofold. The first is to connect these communities with local clinics. Um, so they'll have the ability to talk on the phone, to text, and eventually to video chat with the local Blue Ridge Medical Center out in Nelson. And then the second function is kind of an educational component. So we'll be providing a video library on this tablet with a variety, covering a variety of health topics to kind of empower these individuals to take steps towards a better well-being because we feel that knowledge is kind of that first step and will allow them to ask educated questions will allow them to protect themselves against fungicides and pesticides, um, and we'll just give them a larger knowledge knowledge base as far as health literacy goes. That's incredible. I have so many more follow-up questions for you, but let's hear a little bit about Beto's project first. Yes, uh, my project City Flag. It's a it's a it's a project that ta it connects you know citizens and local government. Uh, the way we do this is by connecting them through a mobile app. But first, let me talk about what inspired me. Uh, so basically, as an organizer, you know, I used to organize communities in the east side of Austin, and I used to knock on 100 doors a day, you know, and there were always uh, infrastructure issues, you know, like the potholes, the missing stop lights, the, the stop signs, the graffiti, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so people used to ask me, well, I will vote for your candidate, but what is he going to do for my streets, for my neighborhood? So I started brainstorming, right? And the idea came about, you know, of, you know, connecting citizens through a mobile app where you take pictures of the issues, right? And that, that information is sent to uh, public works. The way we do that, too, is by flagging the reports. So you take a picture of uh, an issue, right, and you flag it. It's a red flag, right? And in turn, uh, public works and the city uh, changes a flag from red to green when they close the case. So what we want to do is monitor the issues in the city and at the same time, you know, provide citizens a tool where they can communicate with their local government. On top of that, what we want to create too is a gamification layer where the more flags you create, the more active you are in your community, the more points you get. And in turn, you can change those points to badges. And those badges give you real-time incentives like a two-for-one at a coffee shop or 30% uh, discount at a restaurant. And, and we want to do everything within the local economy. So that's the idea behind City of Flag. We want to promote and empower citizens to become active in their communities. And, and, and I think that uh, Latinos, you know, sometimes feel disenfranchised from the, you know, the local system. And I think this is going to be a great tool for them to uh, be more in, in, involved in their local government. That's awesome. Thank you, Beto. And what a unique way to, to apply technology to a problem. All of you have um, have that in common. You saw a problem in your community, and, and, and you're, you're tackling it. And we're so excited that we get to help you get the funds to do that. Um, Sarai, I know that for you, at least, the, um, the idea for your app is, is personal. Um, can you tell us how you, um, how you had come up with this idea and how the Veal Innovators Challenge um, plays into that? Yeah, definitely. So, um, as you mentioned, it is personal. Dreamers Roadmap became something because it happened to me when I graduated. Well, I graduated at the top of my class, and they told me when I was young that if I graduated and if I did a really good job during school, that I was going to be able to go to college. So I, that's exactly what I did. I tried my best during elementary, middle school, and high school. 
And once I graduated, I found out that because of my status, I didn't qualify for FAFSA or any of the scholarships that my friends were applying for. Therefore, that was a huge shock for me. Like, nobody had ever mentioned this to me. Nobody told me that because of my status, I was going to be denied all these resources that I was told I was supposed to get because of my uh, academic achievements and involvement within the community. So Dreamers Roadmap is definitely something personal where I believe that no student should be denied access to a higher education because of their status. And it is very difficult for us to find scholarships because of our status. Thankfully now there's a lot more resources available for students in our situation, like a lot of websites and nonprofits and foundations that support undocumented students. But I still thought that there was still kind of like scattered all over the place. There's still not one go-to place for these students to go um, and find all these opportunities in a convenient way. So Dreamers Roadmap came about uh, when the Voto Latino Innovators Challenge appeared uh, and, and I found out through my friend Teek who's actually also another winner um, so I'm really happy that we both made it this far and um, yeah thanks to this opportunity I was able to not just put this not into just an idea that I had but actually make it into a possibility and a reality in order to help undocumented students in the whole nation to go to college and more of them into college because I believe that a lot of the issue why there's so many like students that don't apply for college is because they don't know where to find the money to go to college and Dreamers Roadmap will be that tool to guide them to a higher education in a more convenient and easy way. That's amazing. I, I wish that we could see the people who are listening to this broadcast right now and we could have them raise their hands to see how many of them know someone who is going to benefit from this app. This is amazing. Um, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I've, yeah, I've had uh, many people reach out to me already, and they're very excited about the idea of being actually made into something that's going to potentially help thousands and probably millions of students in the nation. That's awesome. Thanks, Sarai. Um yeah. Alexis, when you were sharing about your project, um, you did such a great job of describing um, the issue, but my question for you right now is, why this issue? Of all the issues in the Latino community, education, immigration, health, uh, why specifically the health of migrant farm workers? Why, why, was this, why did this issue speak to you? Yeah, so I actually volunteer as a Spanish interpreter at the local UVA hospital. Um, and a lot of Latinos will come from very far just because of the financial aid that uh, the hospital can offer. Um, and I've seen and also read about through my studies in public health the large disparities that the Latino community faces as far as health um, and there's a lot of players that come into uh, that come into that socioeconomic status, transportation, language, health literacy, all these things um, but when you think about it migrant farm workers all these barriers are kind of compounded for a number of reasons, one being that they are living in these very, very rural communities, um, two being a lot of them are undocumented, and so they do kind of try to hide away and really not have very much information on record, and a lot of them fear actually seeking care for this reason. Um, but Charlottesville is actually a very rural community once you, once you escape from kind of the UVA bubble, if you will, and so I connected with our community partner, Vanessa Hale, who works with Blue Ridge Medical Center, which is kind of the single hub, the single clinic that's serving all these farm work communities out there. Um, and I was talking with her, and she's basically, uh, her and a, a group of health promoters are, are serving a lot, large number of of men and women who are working at these camps and they're really strapped by the amount of funding they can receive um, and when they can they'll take mobile clinics out to these camps and provide kind of basic checkups and if someone is in emergent need of care we'll, we'll be able to refer them to UVA um, but we, we had this conversation and in this past semester I worked with her along with uh, a couple other peers uh, to conduct interviews with these men, looking at some of the health barriers they faced, but also looking at technology, um, what technology they had access to, um, what technology they were interested in, things like this, because we saw technology as a way to connect um, people who are living in these rural areas to, to clinics. 
Um, so we're kind of testing the water, saying maybe is this is this feasible to bring technology into this? Because we did see that, um, as you mentioned, Latinos there there is a huge uh, presence uh, online and with smartphones and all this uh, in this new age. So that's kind of how it all got started. Um, and we did see that these men had a huge interest in learning about their own health, uh, about a variety of health topics, and about, I think, 50, 50, 90 something percent of them had cell phones, about 50 percent of those individuals had smartphones, so they did have some kind of uh, comfort, I guess, with using technology, um, but yeah, that's kind of how we, how we pick this population. That's great. Um, and you say we. Do, uh, do you have uh, a large team working with yes. you? Yes. Yes. I would love to mention them. Um, so I'm working with two student peers, Bijan Morchetti, who is also a third year in the college, and also Andrew Mitchell, who is a computer programmer. So he's kind of our technology specialist on the team. But we also brought in a couple faculty mentors, Rupa Valdez and Laura Barnes, one who's in engineering. And uh, so she's a systems engineer and has experience designing technology and applications and is actually working on a, another project with Latina women building a, a tablet device for cervical cancer prevention. Wow. So this is kind of how these projects all tied together. And then, like I mentioned, Blue Ridge Medical Center is our community partner who we're working with. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, that's really great. Um, Sarai, um, I have a couple more questions for you about your project. Um, do you have a team working with you as well, or are you kind of the, the face behind, behind all this? Yeah, I do actually have a team working with me, and I'm very grateful for them. It's Fred and Frizzly, which I met actually through Facebook encryption at, as being a finalist for the challenge. Wow. Um, so that was amazing. Um, it was really cool. Frizzly just kind of reached out. He's like, hey, I love your idea. Like, I could have benefited from this in school. My brother can benefit this from, like, right now. If you need help with anything, let me know. And I was like, well, yes, I actually do need help. Like, all the tech stuff, you know, like, was still, like, not very well settled. Like, the idea was there. I had an idea of how I wanted it to look. So Fred and Frizzly just kind of, like, came together, like, really quickly. And Frizzly um, mocked up the logo and... Fred got on it really quickly, got the domain, and started a website. So that's that's my team so far, and I have my marketing mentor, uh, which is Jesse here in Palo Alto. So so far, that's that's my team. That's awesome. And what's that website for anyone who's listening who wants to check it out? What's that link? So right now it's uh, dreamersroadmap.com. So we're still working on it. There's like like we said, we just got the domain, kind of just put something really quickly together so not a lot of content is on there. We're working on getting all of that soon because I actually got invited to a Dreamers conference here in Berkeley to present on this specific topic That's awesome. on the 21st of this month. So we have a lot of uh, fun, exciting events to go to that we've already been invited to to speak about this. Congrats. That's so great. Um, Thank you. That's so great. So dreamersroadmap.com. Are you guys on social media yet? Are there any yes. handles to so, throughout? You guys are listening to everybody out there. Follow us on Twitter. We're at dreamersroadmap as well on Twitter. All right, so that's at Dreamers Roadmap and dreamersroadmap.com. Thanks. Correct. Um, and as you're working on developing this project, uh, do you have any outside partners or organizations working with you besides your team? Uh, so far, no. I am looking to speak more with uh, educators for Pro Consideration and mm -hmm. another nonprofit here in San Francisco who actually are, uh, did a workshop yesterday to help undocumented students find scholarships. So a lot of organizations, again, because of the announcement and the publicity that we've gotten so far, a lot of people are reaching out to me to partner up with me. So I'm really excited to see um, what what uh, new partnerships we're going to come up with in the following months. That's awesome. This. That's awesome. Yeah. So for the for those who are out there who are looking to partner with a talented young Latina in developing this app, <laughs> what sorts of what sorts of organizations? Um, or how, how can organizations contact you? So they can go ahead and email us at dreamersroadmap at gmail.com. They can go ahead and follow us on Twitter and send us a message. We'll follow you back or just uh, tweet us and we'll get in contact with you. Um, so far, those are the two ways that you can contact us. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Sarai. Um, we'll, Thank you. Yeah, I know. We'll come back to you in a minute. But Beto, 
let's chat with you, City Flag. <laughs> now, where? Tell me where you're where you're based, and um, is your app going to be local, or are you trying to make it national? So we're we're based out of uh, San Antonio, uh, Texas, and also Austin, Texas. Uh, the reason why is because uh, we we created the application here is because we've been connected, you know, with uh, local officials and with the city, uh, the city culture, right? That has to do with anything that can help the city grow and uh, especially infrastructure. Um, well, I mean, basically, we want to grow uh, at a state level, but at a statewide level. But at the same time, I mean, we're open for opportunities in any other city. You know, if if someone wants to partner in San Francisco, let's say, or New York, we're open for that negotiation. Uh, we want to grow, and at the, at the same time, we want to, you know, have a strong influence when it comes to connecting citizens and local government. That's really, really great, especially for such a large city. Um, so just earlier today, I was on Facebook and my hometown. So I grew up in Riverdale, Utah. I know, probably no one on this on this webcast has ever heard of it. <laughs> um, Riverdale, Utah, small little town about 30, north of, 30 miles north of Salt Lake. And we have a Facebook group. We are in the 21st century. And... <laughs> There's this open lot in my town where there used to be a Walmart and then it was a Macy's department store and now I think they used it as a haunted house last year and now it's just empty, this like giant retail space on, on like the main road in town. And I saw on the Facebook post, on the Facebook page that somebody posted, hey, what if we got a Whole Foods or a, a Trader Joe's? And, and somebody else was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. And then another lady was like, I sent in a petition. Let's all do it. And somebody tagged the mayor. And then the mayor like commented and said like the city manager would follow up. And I thought that's, that's so cool that my, my little tiny town can do that. But my town's tiny. Um, and I know that in a place like San Antonio, like Austin, like these, these larger cities, um, it's, not, it's, it's not necessarily that way. So the fact that you're providing um, a direct tie-in to elected officials, to local government, uh, to, to appointed officials even, is really, really awesome. Um, that's awesome that you're doing that. Um, who, tell us about your team also. Um, who's behind yeah. City Flag? Definitely. And before I go into that, uh, it's, it's interesting that you say that because uh, we also have a flag for petitions, you know, so you can not only, you know, flag issues, but you can also, you know, petition your local government on any issue, you know, a local park, et cetera. Anything that you, any concerns you have, it's a, it's a tunnel of communication between, you know, citizens and local government. And so uh, the team is, is conformed by, uh, it's five of us, right? It's the... Uh, I, I started this, I co-funded this application with a professor. Uh, he's at the Watt University in Tampico, Tamaulipas, and he's a professor of urban development and communications. And, um, and I got together with him, and we started brainstorming the idea. And then we got together with another friend. His name is, well, the, the professor, his name is Alberto Gomez, and my friends call him Beto as well. And so we have two Betos in the team, right? And then my other friend is Eduardo Bravo, He's uh, from the University of Incarnate Word, and he studied business, so he's, uh, he does a lot of uh, business consulting for us as well. And then my other friend is uh, Marco Vera. He's the engineer. He's up, uh, you know, programming and doing all the, you know, the, the technical part of the app. Uh, he gradu graduated from UNAM University in Mexico City, and uh, he's one of the pioneers in, in robotics and anything that has to do with high tech at UNAM. And he also has his own company, Vitronics Smart, so he's a... Uh, He's, he's out there. He's an entrepreneur by heart. And then another another friend, uh, Ivan Benavides from the University of Texas at Austin. Uh, he's also uh, our marketing officer. So he's five of us. And then we also have uh, Ada Ortega. She's uh, our PR, and she graduated uh, from here from the University of Texas at Austin. And she's very no from the University of American University. My bad. And she's very active, and uh, she used to work with the Democratic Party here in Texas. So she's doing all our PR, and uh, and we're really happy. It's a great team. That's great. Thank you. You have quite quite the um, the staff already. Um, I'll <laughs> six of them. It is, it is. I'll come back and ask you a couple of questions about that. But Sarai, I know you have to get going in a little bit. So. Um, not only are our winners developing these great tech ideas, they're living other lives as students, as entrepreneurs, as a whole host of other things. <laughs> um, and so Sarai has to run back to class. But Sarai, any last words about um, about Dreamers Roadmap or any last words about your project for our audience? Sure. 
Well, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody again, Voto Latino, the Haystack, and MacArthur Foundation for giving us this wonderful opportunity. This is um, a wonderful way to get started and for some to kind of sustain their ideas. So I'm very grateful for that and thank you again to everybody, all partners and supporters who made this a possibility. And uh, for all of you who are watching, uh, make sure to stay tuned, follow us on Twitter, um, and once we have more information, we'll definitely be posting that on Twitter for when the website is live and show your support and comments and if there's anything that we can do to better, please let us know and you can contact us via Twitter or um, also at dreamersroadmap at gmail.com. Thank you. Thank you, Sarai. Good luck in class. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. I have to run to lab now. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Um, okay, Beto, let's come back to you. Now, this team that you've assembled is quite diverse and international even. Um, how did you get connected with, um, with so many d diverse folks in, in so many different places? That, that, that's a good question. I, uh, I, I grew up with, uh, in the Valley uh, in South Texas, McAllen, Texas. Alexis? Hey. <laughs> Hello. Okay. I'm, I'm All still right. here. All right. We lost, we lost Beto for a minute. So we'll, we'll hear from him in just a minute when he gets back. Um, I wanted to just point out something, though, for, um, for those who have never had the pleasure of meeting our innovators yet. The three folks who are on here today, um, none of them actually has a, a background or studied computer science or engineering or, or tech on the back end. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that that these folks are, are the ones with the ideas. And you know, that was the point of the VL Innovators Challenge, to, to find ideas in unlikely places, an idea that could change a community, and to provide it the funding and the contracts and the resources to bring it to life. Um, uh, Sarai, who dropped off, is a poli-sci major. Um, Beto is in law school right now. Um, Alexis, remind me of your major. Human biology. Human biology. Okay, yeah. so a little bit science related, but not so much <laughs> in the tech department. Exactly. Um, but what these what these innovators are is they're leaders, and you know a great leader by the people that they surround themselves with. And uh, it sounds like you all have fantastic teams behind you. And Beto, you were telling us about yours um, when we lost you there, but we're ready to hear more about them. Yeah, sorry, I have bad connection. Uh, no so I grew up with, in South Texas in McAllen. In McAllen, Texas, where uh, Beto Romes, that's where I met him, and so we always kept in touch. You know, uh, we have similar, you know, interests such as you know, communications, government, and uh, so we always kept in touch. And then I, I got to, and then Ivan Benavides, I also grew up with him in, in South Texas, but we went to the University of Texas at Austin, and that's where we kind of brainstormed more ideas. How do we connect government? How do we, you know, be more participant in in our communities? And then the international side of it is with Marco Vera from Vietnam University. That's really interesting because I met him at this forum, which is called U.S.-Mexico Focus, and it connects, you know, cities, you know, uh, leaders from Mexico and the U.S., and that's where I got to meet him at a summit in Vietnam uh, University, and he was very active. You know, he kept talking about, you know, uh, about many projects that he had, and so I, I told him about my idea, and that's where we started, you know, brainstorming, you know, how to... How do we get this app, you know, going? And that's uh, how that's how we kind of started. In that same summit, I met Eduardo Bravo, and uh, you know, he's very energetic, very passionate as well. And so we all, you know, clicked. You know, we made a good team, and and ever since we've been working together, brainstorming the idea, developing the idea, you know, studying every aspect of the idea. And so far, it's been a success. I mean, it's a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifices because we don't live in the same cities. But when we get together, we work really hard, and we try to develop as much as use, uh, use by using uh, Google Hangouts or Skype. So it's really interesting. We're really excited. That's great, and that's awesome that you're even highlighting how technology is making your tech solution possible <laughs> by having a team being able to work remotely. That's that's really great. Um, um, I have a question for both of you, and I want to start out with Alexis answering first. Um, so we covered a minute ago how. The, the folks who are on this panel today, um, nobody has a, a tech background necessarily. So I'm just curious, is this your first venture into a tech project, or have you ever tried to create anything else? Um, I want to hear first from Alexis and then Beto. 
Yeah, so technology is definitely not my forte, not my specialty. Um, I'm more interested in the, the human aspects of things, but that's also a really important part of technology design is that kind of human computer interface. Um, so I got pulled in my freshman year onto a project that I briefly mentioned, um, working on designing an application on cervical cancer prevention for a community of Latina women um, down in southern Florida. And that was actually uh, a project that my two faculty mentors, Rupa Valdez and Laura Barnes, were working on. And so myself and also my peer, Bijan, were working on kind of designing interviews and surveys on how can we make this application better so it's easier for people to interact with, um, especially individuals of low literacy, how can you make it as easy to use as possible. And so that was kind of my first step in uh, to the technology world, but my, my family is actually divided into half medicine and half kind of computer programming. So at the dinner table, we always are either talking about <laughs> one or the other and kind of heard it in, or in and out uh, growing up, but this is my first kind of uh, venture into designing something from scratch, I think. No, that's really great. That's cool that you have that background. Um, did you grow up in the Charlottesville area, or where's your family from? Um, I'm actually from Northern Virginia in uh, okay. Chantilly, so about 45 minutes from D.C., about two hours from Charlottesville, uh, but... I call Charlottesville my home sometimes. My, my mom gets <laughs> sad. <laughs> well, tell her it's at least the same state. So Exactly. Yeah. We're not too far at all. You can drive there. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vita, what about you? Is City Flag your first venture into the tech world? Yes, definitely. And, and that's a good question. I, I, I'm glad you asked that because when, when I was, you know, when I had the abstract idea, it was kind of hard, you know, to, like, putting into perspective, you know, how, how are we going to develop this? And so I feel like a lot of people are discouraged, you know, they have great ideas, but a lot of people are discouraged because they don't know the process. Well, I mean, I didn't know the process either. I mean, I was, you know, I was as well, I was lost, you know, how do, how do we get this start and everything, right? But I had the idea, and as we structured the idea, and we moved along with the idea, and we talked to more people that are in the business of, you know, technology and, and you know, and communications, we were able to put all the pieces together, which I think is really important because you start with this idea, which is really abstract and really crazy. But as you talk to more people and you study the, the idea, you put the, the pieces together. You structure the idea in such a way that it's possible and you can make it a reality. So, I mean, I wasn't the tech expert, but I mean, as I moved along and learned more and I read more about it and, you know, about how to develop an app, you know, the fundraising, you know, uh, how, to, how to get, you know, investment and how to have a, a real app that is going to have create meaningful change, right? Or that is going to be, you know, uh, productive or, or it's going to create profit. And so the idea, you know, is, is one thing, but developing is another thing. So I think that's where my, the engineer, Marco Vera, came in and he, he put things to perspective. He told me, you know, that is a little bit too crazy. We cannot do that. But if we, if we do it this other way, maybe we can go ahead and, and develop it. And, so it's, it's great to have a team, right, that, that knows yeah. a little bit about everything because we, you all, you know, put the pieces together. So I think that's what it's about, you know, asking questions and, and failing. You know, you got to fail in order to, you know, get back, out, back up and... Right. So I totally agree with Beto that having a, a solid team behind you is really, really important. And um, I have definitely learned that here with Voto Latino. I've been with Voto Latino for a year and a half now. And people are really surprised when they find out there are only 11 of us working here, including all our VPs, including our, our president and our CEO, Maria Teresa. It's, it's a team of 11. And uh, we're able to do some really, some really cool things. Um, just this last year, uh, I mentioned it was our 10-year anniversary. And one of the things that we did is we took our Power Summit conference on on the road. Power Summit is um, a conference that we've been holding every year since 2012 and we gather together Latino millennials, so again young Latinos who are, are looking for um, leadership training and advocacy training and um, to develop their media and technology skills and we, we bring them together and then we bring experts. We brought this year um, Ariana Huffington, we brought members of Congress, we brought leaders from, from Google, from, from other tech companies, from media, and 
we bring them together in, in a room with these young people who are so eager and, and ready to learn. And we put on um, four of these conferences last year. It's normally a once a year thing, and we were able to take the show on the road and, and get four of them. And it was really amazing and really energizing to see uh, to see the just the group of people and uh, the fact that, that these uh, projects are, are making a difference. Um, I had mentioned earlier that Volta Latino started out as a, a civic engagement organization and so of course we do a lot of voter registration which we still do a lot of but we've also expanded to, to other issues which is why it's so great to see the innovators tackling so many of these issues in their projects. Um, we work on immigration, we work on health care, um, voting rights, uh, the environment, women's health issues, um, all sorts of things. And uh, among the seven projects, we're covering um, farm worker health with Alexis's project. We're covering um, through our other project, Mi Mint, they were covering um, mental health for young Latinas, which is really important. Through Beto's App City flag, we have um, you know, uh, a, a way to increase civic engagement and have Latinos interact with their local government. We also have um, Mayra Cruz, who uh, is one of, another one of our winners with a project called Mi Mentor, uh, and that one's a very unique app. It's a it's an app to connect uh, Latino students with Latino mentors in the health field. Um, another one of our, our winners, Teek, his is the Stanford Latino Entrepreneurship Development Program, where he's creating a six week online course for Latino business owners to access on the go. Uh, another one of our apps is Julie Through the System. It's a mobile app and a website for Latino youth to help them navigate uh, the steps they would take after entering the, the juvenile system. And the, the, the goal of Julie Through the System is to, to keep young Latinos out, of course, uh, out of the system, uh, but to make them aware of their rights in, in the case that they do find themselves in, in some sort of trouble. And, and of course, Sarai, who uh, joined us earlier, her app, Dreamers Roadmap, is helping um, undocumented students find find opportunities uh, to further their education. It's, it's amazing. And um, uh, among, among these projects, um, Alexis, you, you mentioned yours, uh, your farm worker uh, health project. Um, one of the issues that I know that you mentioned you're facing as you're trying to design this, this program is the fact that a lot of your target population, um, unfortunately, is, is illiterate. Um, how have you changed your plan or adapted your program to take that into account and to make sure that the community you're targeting you're targeting is still being served through through this mobile app. Yeah, definitely. So if you think about it, technology has a lot of unique ways that you can adapt it for individuals of low liter well, health literacy. Um, one of those being rather than having to read everything, you can use audio as a form of communication. Um, also, having images and videos is a lot easier to use than looking at a paper pamphlet that may be dense and, and more difficult to understand. Visually seeing something is a lot easier and can stick with you. Um, the second thing that I would mention is that sometimes mouse mouses scrolling and things like that doesn't come naturally to people who haven't ever used a computer, but touchscreen actually does, um, and there's been some studies on that just because it's, it's easier to, I guess, touch where you'd want to click rather than try to navigate the mouse, mouse pad. Um, and so that, that's one of the reasons that we, are, we chose tablets as the delivery device, I guess, the technology form of preference for this uh, intervention. That's really great. Um, that's so interesting that you mentioned um, the issue about the, the mouse, the computer mouse. Um, mm -hmm. It's definitely a lot easier with the touch screen. I can, I can see that. Um, that's really awesome that you're being able to take that into account. Uh, do you see your project expanding? I know you're targeting just a few select camps in your area in Virginia, but do you see this expanding um, maybe farther than, than that area to the whole state or Most maybe definitely. just nationally? Yeah. Most definitely. Um, so I guess the plan right now is just to start it off small uh, and really get, get a hold of the technology itself and if need be, uh, change the video library and really make it uh, as easy to use as possible. Um, so we're going to start off with just five camps. Each camp has between 10 and 50 individuals, really depends. Um, but the idea is to expand it first into Nelson and Albemarle County and also beyond just the male Latino farm worker community because if, if, you, if you think about it, it's not just these individuals that are kind of tucked away and have difficulty finding an entry into the healthcare system. Um, it's Latino families who live here in the U.S. as well. 
Um, so thinking about how we might be able to install these things in community locations, coffee shops, things like that, where people can come and use it at their leisure. Uh, we've also been contacted, I think, with this publicity helping a little bit by the Cancer Center at UVA and other organizations who might want to use such a device for their patients um, as a form of education, maybe pre-appointment, uh, brushing up on some of the information so that they can ask uh, more, more educated questions and be more prepared themselves for the visit. That's wonderful. Um, do you have a, a website up or um, somewhere online where folks can learn a little bit more about your project? Uh, at the moment, we do not, but we're, we're working on it. We're in the process of, of that whole thing. Yeah, no, things. no worries. Um, <laughs> for for folks who are listening, who maybe know of an organization that could be helpful, um, what what sort of uh, partnerships would be helpful to you, and how can folks get a get get a hold of you? Yeah, so they can contact me via email. Um, I have kind of a strange a strange email, but. Um, <laughs> it's avc4ew at virginia.edu, uh, but also if you just Google UVA, they have a, a person lookup page that will give you my email as well. Um, but I guess any individual who thinks this might be useful to uh, the, one of their communities that they are a part of or uh, an organization that has individuals who might be facing barriers of language or literacy that think that this kind of device might be helpful um, in that manner could reach out to me. Awesome, thank you. Um, and just uh, to repeat that, I, uh, her email is a little bit a little bit hard to understand. Yeah. <laughs> but you can always also reach out to Voto Latino um, directly. We have a, an inbox set up specifically for questions about the VL Innovators Challenge. And that address also is a little bit unique. It's VL, so V is in Victor, L is in Larry, dash challenge at hri.uci.edu. So for any follow-up questions about the VL Innovators, um, the projects individually, the young people themselves, um, or just anything in relation to the, the challenge in general, feel free to, uh, to send that information uh, through that, or those questions through that inbox. Um, Beto. You were a moment ago telling us a little bit about your um, your previous tech experience, and um, I want to just hear what the rest of your thoughts were. <laughs> yeah, we'll catch him in just a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So I mentioned a minute ago that for our seven winners, we get to do something really cool. We're taking them to Google uh, at the end of the month. We're so grateful and so excited to be working with Google um, to take folks over there. Um, Alexis, what are you looking forward to the most about that experience? Okay, I think we're having some some sound troubles, but that's okay. We'll keep going. Um, Beto, are you are you with us? Yes. Okay, great. Um, okay. You want to pipe in with the rest of your answer now? Yes, yes. Just to say that, I mean, if you have an idea, go for it. You know, uh, don't hesitate. The dots will connect. You know, uh, meet the people, and and you will advance with your project. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, um, Alexis. Are you are you with us? Yes, I'm back. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So the question, it's for both of you. Uh, we'll, we had started with Alexis, though. We're, we're heading to Google in a couple weeks. What are you most excited about, and what is it that you were looking to learn while you're there? Yeah. I, am, I am phenomenally excited to be able to travel to the West Coast. I've never been past Kansas, I think. Um, oh, wow. So <laughs> to soak up the sun a little amidst all the snow will be a delight. But aside from that, to be able to work with Google on developing this application is going to be a phenomenal help. Uh, like I said, technology really isn't my specialty. And to be able to get some advice from people who do this for a living and do incredible things, um, Google has their hands in a, a many, many projects, uh, I think is going to be incredibly an ind indispensable opportunity. 
I'm actually quite a little bit jealous. I wish that I were getting this this royal treatment also. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but we're so, we're so excited that we get to give you the chance to go. Um, but though, what about you? What is it that you're looking to learn? Um, I, I do. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say this is, might be a little bit of a selfish question because we want to make sure that we're planning the right things that are going to help you. <laughs> no, I think this is a great opportunity. You know, uh, I mean, when I met all the innovators in the East Coast, I was, you know, I was surprised. You know, I was, you know, I was really inspired. You know, I think everyone has a lot to offer. And now that we're going to Google, heading to Google, I think it's going to be a great experience. You know, learning like, uh, like Alexis said, you know, learning from the best. You know, people that do this for a living. So I think that being there with them and learning from them, I think we're going to be able to develop, you know, better a better app or a better, you know, business uh, model that we have. So uh, I think it's going to be a great experience and and uh, and I'm excited. Let's see what happens. I mean, I have been to uh, the Google campus, the HQ once, but I think now I'm going to be working in, the, you know, in the HQ during the boot camp. So I'm really excited. That's going to be fun. Good. We're so glad. We're so glad. Um, we've covered a little bit during this hangout how um, how it's possible even for for those of us who don't have a tech a tech background to contribute to the tech sector. What advice would you give um, to others like you who maybe don't have the know how but they have the ideas? Like, what advice would you give to them to as as they try to make their their dreams happen? Yeah, I think I think that's a great question. I think uh, first. You have to identify the problems that you see in anything, or if you have a you know a, a an idea for uh, an application that is for entertainment, etc. You have to identify what you want to do with this uh, with this idea, and not not only talking about apps, but I mean talking about everything, right? And you gotta brainstorm, right? You gotta look at every side of the of the idea. You gotta look at the structure of the idea, how you can incorporate the idea into uh, your reality, right? Your your daily uh, reality, right? So I think it's important to see uh, the angle of you know what 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 is people are looking what are people looking for you know and that's I think that's the most important thing when you find a little niche that's when you can develop the idea and if you don't have a tech background that's not a problem you know if you go into any university you know people are studying uh, programming or people are you know the, you know studying uh, in in the technology sector so you can approach them and talk to them about the idea if it's about technology right of course. And and you can brainstorm with them, and, and maybe you can find you know your your future uh, business partner. So I think it's it's important to to be intentional with the idea and to be outspoken with the idea. A lot of people are very reserved with their with their ideas because people think they're gonna steal their ideas. I think in the contrary, right? It's really hard to develop a full idea. So if you talk about the idea with anyone, it's really hard that they're gonna go out and, and pursue that idea. In the contrary, let's collaborate. Let's listen to others and and let's grow together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you there on the collaboration and um, listening to other people's ideas. Um, Alexis, uh, did you have anything to add on advice there? Yeah, um, just coming from the perspective of public health, I think it, it's almost a beneficial uh, thing not to be approaching it from, not to be approaching a public health problem from a, the technology standpoint. I think mm -hmm. going in and, like Beto said, approaching seeing a full picture of the problem is really beneficial and then asking the question well how is this problem best approached what kinds of solutions can we brainstorm and if technology does seem to be something that might benefit then reaching out to other individuals and really mm -hmm. forming an interdisciplinary team I think the more minds with a diverse uh, background the better because technology it, it's not just about the device itself I think it's also about um, how people interact with it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it was beneficial for me to approach it from more of a, a health perspective, looking at, okay, what, what kind of problems are facing these men, and, and then getting advice from specialists who, who do this for a living. Right, no, that's spot on. Um, I have a question for both of you, just playing off of that. Um, in trying to to get feedback from different places and incorporate diverse voices, um, do either of you have a method in place to source feedback from your target population? How are you making sure that your your product is useful for the people you're actually targeting? So I could start off with that um, if you like, but so this past I guess seven, eight months now, I've been working with my Pierre Bijan out at the camps and Vanessa conducting interviews with the men, 
like I mentioned, looking at their health problems, looking at what technology they have access to, and also just having this conversation like, if we ter were to develop, develop this device, um, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it would be helpful? What form would, you know, should it take? What would be most beneficial to you? Um, and so that was kind of step one for us. And then after we develop some kind of prototype, we're hoping to bring it to the camps and have that conversation again and have them work through it, see what challenges come up, and then through an iterative process of redesigning, redesigning, get it, get it down. Awesome. Thank you. Beto, how about for City Flag? Uh, for, for us, it was, uh, you know, the experience of organizing communities. Uh, that's where we kind of, like, found out that this was a big issue, the infrastructure issue. And from there, you know, All right. We'll hear from Beto in just a moment. <laughs> Um, Alexis, what what did the men say when they when you asked them these questions? What were I'm just curious to know, like yeah, what are yeah. some of the health issues and um, the suggestions that they had? So a lot of them are what we're what we're seeing in our countries: uh, diabetes, high blood sugar, <laughs> high blood pressure, um, kind of the basic chronic diseases. But uh, in addition to that, a lot of them uh, are facing some hazards at work, just working out in the field all day in the summer when the heat's out, and then also into the winter months being out in the snow. Um, hmm. And so things like pesticide and fungicide ex exposures, uh, a, a large concern there, as well as tick bites and just physical injuries, um, sprained ankles, hurt hands, things like that. So teaching them basics about medication, even Advil and Tylenol and what medications not to mix, things like that. Um, but something, wow. they were, something they were also interested in is kind of how to navigate the health system here because most of them, I'd say 95% of them are from Mexico where the health system is very, very different. Uh, also the pharmacy system is very, very different. So you think it's, oh, it's super easy to go to CVS and fill your prescription. But to them to be able to, A, get to the store first of all, and then to figure out that whole system of, oh, I don't have to bring the bottle to refill it, or, oh, I don't need uh, another, I guess, prescription to get that second refill, basics like that, how to navigate the health system here in the U.S. was a big question that they had. No, that's so important, and you know what, we face that even um, with with the folks who, who are already here, who maybe been here a little bit longer than um, than the, the farm workers you've been working with. Um, one of the issue campaigns we work on here at Voto Latino is um, surrounding health care, um, sexual and reproductive health rights, uh, women's health, LGBT health issues, um, affordable, the Affordable Care Act, and informing um, the Latino community about that law. And um, it's been so interesting. We've had these Google Hangouts that we've done, like this one. Um, but what we do for our health campaign is we, we take questions from our audience. So we have them submit them to us on social media or through um, a text message. And we get a lot of questions through text message and, um, and on social, but surprising number on, on text message. And people tell us what they want to know, what's confusing about the law, um, what they don't understand. Um, we found a couple of things. One, a lot of people are still having a hard time, like you said, navigating the healthcare system. Uh, for many, this is the first time that they've had health insurance in general. And so things like, what's a deductible? What's a copay? You know, I, I can barely explain to you what that, <laughs> what that, I mean, no, I can. But those are terms that are really hard, especially for somebody who's, who's doing this for the very first time. Um, and it's been really... Uh, really great to to hear how you're tackling that challenge, and um, also just working on the health campaign for Voto Latino to have the opportunity to disseminate that information that's so very much needed in in our community. Um, but though, welcome welcome back. <laughs> sorry, I have bad connection. Sorry, sorry. No problem. It's okay. Technology helps us do awesome things. Sometimes it's a thorn in our side, but it, we're still having a great program. So no worries, no worries. Um, I, we had just talked about how we're how we're getting feedback or how you guys not me you know, I'm putting myself on the team y'all uh, <laughs> how you guys are, are working with your target populations how are you getting feedback so we heard a little bit about Alexis how on her project but how are you doing that for City Flag how are you making sure that uh, the local communities you're working in are are going to benefit that this is actually going to be useful for them 
Definitely. That's a great question. Uh, so first we start off by organizing communities, uh, you know, getting in touch with them, you know, asking you no know, questions. I think that's the most important, uh, you know, idea. How do you, what do you ask and what kind of feedback do you want to get so you can have a, you know, a productive and efficient uh, application. So asking questions to the community and then, of course, you know, getting in touch with city officials and state officials and even, you know, congressmen, you know. I think the idea is to get in touch with them, you know, get feedback from them. And because they represent their districts and their, and their uh, you know, and their congressional offices, maybe they have a better, you know, sense of what's going on down there, down in the, in the communities. And then if we can get in touch with them, right, and then connect the citizens with them and the local government and state government, I think that's a win-win because that's where, where we, well, that's what we want to do. You know, we want to create a tunnel of communication between, you know, the citizens and the, and the government. And if we can do it, you know, with them in person, asking them for feedback, I think that's a, that's a success. I agree. I agree with you. Um, and it's so important to have all those players involved in finding solutions to to these problems. Um, thanks so much to both of you. Um, our time is coming to a close, so I just wanted to give you a couple minutes for closing comments. Just any any last um, words about your your project, about your experience with the Veal Innovators Challenge. Um, and Beto, I think we have not yet um, talked about a way to get a hold of you and um, partnerships for, for City Flag potentially. So we'll start with Beto first and then Alexis. First, uh, great. So uh, I mean, I, I just want to, you know, tell everyone out there that to get involved, you know, I think we need more Latinos in the tech sector and uh, and we just need people to get involved, you know, with their communities. And if you have a, a good idea, you know, go for it, you know. I mean, pursue that idea and, and you will end up, you know, making it happen. Uh, for the VL Innovators, I think it's a great program. And for next year, you should apply. I think it's given us uh, so many tools and we're ready to use them. And it's inspired us in many ways. And uh, a good way to get a hold of City Flag is by uh, our email. Our website is cityflag, C I. Uh, T Y F L A A G dot co not com co C O so cityflag dot co and then uh, you 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 will have a mailing list and then you have a social media there so that's the easiest and fastest way to get a hold of us. And what's the social media uh, name handle? Okay, it's at, on Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter is uh, at cityflag underscore and then you can also mm -hmm. add me at at Beto Altamirano and that's uh, that's my Twitter handle as well. So either either one, you know, we're ready to you know to get in touch with you. Just give us a call or email us. All right, so question, why .co and I.com? <laughs> well, I mean, the question is, is I mean, the idea is because uh, we, we ran out of .com, right? There, there was no other one, so that's why we come. <laughs> and, I think, and I think it's more, you know, sophisticated. It's more modern. <laughs> no, Got kidding. it. We're not .co, <laughs> City Flag Co. No, Got just, it, okay. Just, the domain was, you know, someone took it, so that's, that's the idea, right? I hate them. But, I know, but hey, I like I'm it. Cityflag.co is more like you know, it's more interesting. People are asking why co. That's the, that's the, that's what we want to do. We want to <laughs> steer the conversation, the dialogue. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my challenge to you is to come up with a good answer to that question. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Beto. Alexis, thank any you. last words? <laughs> yeah, just kind of echoing what Beto said. Um, get involved if you have an issue in your community and you have some ideas that a solution and you have passion you can find support you can find organizations who will fund you and will help you do that pilot year um, I heard about Voto Latino just from a friend who had heard a brief conversation with had a brief conversation with me about my project and she sent me this email saying hey this sounds spot on technology Latinos you should apply and so <laughs> You know, last minute in the library working on this application with Bijan. Um, it, it's just been a phenomenal opportunity, and you never know what's going to happen. It's really changed my path for the next <laughs> the next year. We'll see where it goes. Um, so, yeah, I would encourage you to get involved. And then, secondly, I just wanted to thank Photo Latino and Hashtag and MacArthur Foundation and Google and everyone who has a sponsor of this challenge, um, you've given me an incredible opportunity to give something back to my community. I thank you for that. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. Um, and just out of curiosity, how did your friend hear about the VL Innovators Challenge? I honestly am not sure to this day. <laughs> um, I just emailed her telling her that we, we made it to the final round and we oh, were one of, <laughs> one of the winners. But I'll have to, I'll have to ask her. 
Well, however she heard, I'm really glad she did, and I'm really glad that you submitted your your application. It was it was tough. Um, we had hundreds, literally hundreds, of people who applied for this, the VL Innovators Challenge with amazing ideas. Um, and I know it was a hard process for for our judges. We had um, more than 40 community judges who who judged the applications in the first couple of rounds, and then um, in this last round we had. Um, a, a, a panel of judges here in DC who heard from a lot of these projects in person. And I know it was it was hard for them. Um, we're we're so proud for uh, to, for all we've seen so far, and we're excited to see how how far these projects come. Um, so I think it's time to wrap up the the hangout. But for those of you watching, there will be a full video recording of this hangout available immediately. You can find that in two places: uh, www.connectedlearning.tv or you can go to www.youtube.com slash Voto Latino. And to learn more about the work that we do here at VL, um, you can check us out at votolatino.org or follow us on social media at Voto Latino. If you found this conversation helpful, interesting, or you're excited to spread the word about the VL Innovators Challenge, please share it with your networks. Um, you, can, you can do that on social media. Uh, we use the hashtag VL Innovators for the challenge and for this Hangout, VL Hangout. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Hope you, hope you enjoyed the session. And thanks so much uh, for joining us, Beto and Alexis. Bye.